Tesla, Skype, Hotmail, Coinbase. What do these revolutionary companies have in common? Billionaire venture capitalist Tim Draper, who invests in big ideas before they become the next big thing. Now he's traveling the globe to find game-changing startups. Entrepreneurs from 10 countries and six continents will share their ideas for changing the world. There are some entrepreneurs everywhere and they all have a different approach and those cultures bring more creativity. Then 12 finalists will fly to Silicon Valley to compete for a once in a lifetime chance to launch their company on a global scale. 100,000 units? But only one can walk away with the grand prize. One million dollars. It's go time. This is a true entrepreneur here. Meet groundbreaking technology. We've built Denmark's first flying car. Meet rejection. I've seen 15 of these. How are you going to be better? Meet innovation. The blockchain is built for trust. The sky's the limit. Meet the Drapers. center of the universe. Italy and Rome specifically need entrepreneurs. I think we're going to put a Draper startup house right <laughs> With my technology and my company, we can actually see how people are using their money and actually help them. We really want to change the world, try to change the way we really buy and selling property. We are helping people to keep their home. We are helping enterprises raise funds, cutting time and costs. We are creating a new type of fantasy football where football players inside the games are NFTs. So what does it mean to win this million dollars? Winning is just a, a mean to achieve something else, you know, and uh, something else is to create a better product for our customers. It's not about the cash, it's about energy, the focus, and I'm looking forward to hearing his feedback. Someone like Tim will be a huge boost for us. If we won the competition, uh, we can use uh, the, the money to strengthen our project. It's going to be great. Hey everybody, welcome back to Meet the Drapers. It's so great to have you. We're calling in here from Vatican City in Rome. This is all a part of Meet the Drapers as we go around the world and we're looking for those entrepreneurs wherever they may be. And I am here with my sister zooming in from New York City, Polly Draper. She is an actress, producer, writer, director. She makes it all happen in Hollywood. And we have Naveen Jain here with us. Naveen is one of the great entrepreneurs of the world, currently running Viome and also running Moon Express, where he's going to navigate the moon and extract diamonds and emeralds and sapphires from the moon. And we have another guest judge who, God willing, will show up here. We have Cardinal Turkson coming to join us. You have to wear the sense. <laughs> <laughs> what we would like to do is start bringing on our entrepreneurs. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. The co-founder and myself really want to make that impact and what it is is more fun and much more secure in a way you're buying and there's no surprise when you get to the solicitor at the end. Yeah. Slow down. Yeah. My passion is make a difference in people. That's the thing my passion is not buying and selling property, but make difference into people. And that means for us really make a difference to people that buy and sell property. Not be stressful, be clear, be transparent, be honest, and really, really make a process which is fun. If you think about it, really, buying and selling property is the biggest, biggest sale, biggest transaction you do in your life. Why do make fun? Why to make stressful? Why the ability, the people, the buyer, to have a clarity on what they're buying? So for us, it's really help consumer and buyers to just for us, sorry, but 
and equally important, it makes a difference in our employees. I think I strongly believe that we can make a business which is focused on making profit, but also make to add life for people that work for us more fun, enjoying what they do every day, really put the best in the effort what they do and work together as a team. We open the conversation, we allow for constructive feedback openly in the, in the open forum. So for us, it also makes their life better. Are you excited to meet Tim Draper today? I'm excited. That's one of the main reasons to be here. For me, is the ability to pitch our business to one of the biggest entrepreneurs in the world. For me, is fa fantastic and magic. He has a, a way to do things. He has a way to involve people and is still quite clear on his objective, which is unique. He has a drive, he has a passion, and when you see people like that, you feel inspired. So for me, the opportunity to be here is to show what the commitment we're building this business, uh, how much effort we're putting into it. Build a business is always difficult, it's always challenging, but we've done well. We really want to do more. So let's hear from our first entrepreneur from Italy. The company is called Kaja. Go ahead, tell us all about Kaja. You have one of the biggest entrepreneurs in the world. You have Hope just next door. You have Tim in front of you. You have a judge panel. It was a bit of tense. Thank you very much, Tim. Do you really think that uh, buy a house in the US is complex? Now you have no idea how complex it is in Italy, how complex in Europe. The challenge is incredible. Buying and selling a property in Italy is very cumbersome, very lack of trustworthy. 70% of the people find they have no documentation of the property before the purchase. 60% have no idea of the cost. 63% of the people that buy property have no idea if the agent is trustworthy or not. It's a massive problem and the business is huge. It's 120 billion alone in Italy. We set Kaja to develop the first blockchain-based digital platform that allow end-to-end -end execution of all real estate transactions, all the way from booking an appointment online to visit the property, all the way to smart contract at the end. We are the only one that provide a one-stop shop solution. So are you also doing title? We do more than that. On the blockchain? And the title is in blockchain, but unfortunately the, the Italian law doesn't allow to recognize it. So we are the first one. When the Italian law will allow to do it, we have already all stored in blockchain. So right now, if I went and bought a piece of property here in Italy, if somebody else claims the property, I would be in court. Correct. So what do you have to do in Italy? You have to ensure beforehand that everything is in order before you start to purchase. And that's what we do. Our specialization is ensure everything is retrieved before, ensure, so we make an offer we signed a deal of 700 property across Italy to start. So we have got the good traction. People believe in our product. So this revenue, the 400,000 in revenue, is that for title insurance or is that for something else? No, it's purely commission. We are commission-based model. So we are commission for buyer and seller. Unlikely US, you have one agent buyer. And one that 400K seller. in revenue, is that one commission or 10 commissions? How many? 46. 46 commissions? Correct. We did 46. So you are... You are off to the races. When you watch on telly, you always think the fast tracking and they add the speed to two or three. In that case, they didn't. They speak that fast and think that fast. So that surprised me because it just says something. And by the time he's playing something, he has another question. And then he says, the question, he speaks faster than I do. I was like, wow, OK. Uh, we and are just why, started. Why are people paying you for this? Pay to us because they see the transparency, the security to buy. Everything is blockchain. So, so they are trusting the blockchain over the government. Correct. They're saying the blockchain's better than the government. Correct. You have no idea how many solicitors need to make mistakes. We are set there to settle and clear. And then you said you've signed up 700 properties. Correct. What does that mean? We basically signed a deal just a few minutes ago with one of the biggest NPL in Italy, which is your foreclosure in the uh, US, 700 properties to sell on the market. So these oh, are, so the foreclosure properties? These are repos test. So X foreclosure, the company bought them and they, put, they give it to us to put back in the market. And so that's your low hanging fruit is foreclosure properties? The sensation was it was impatient for information, which is a normally a good sign somebody were interested. So give me courage to keep carrying on. X, X foreclosure property, that's our low hanging fruit. We are after the private market, we develop an auction for private. Are they the most uncertain? Exactly, because the basically there you have no clear documentation, but the reality you don't have even on the property on the property you buy in the free market. So the problem is that well widespread. Naveen, Polly, do you have questions? Yeah, Tim, this is one of the few great usage of blockchain. So this is really Correct. good because anytime there is not a trust between two parties, the blockchain is probably one of the best mechanisms. Despite many people just use blockchain for simply the sake of using blockchain, 
this is a great usage of blockchain. Yeah, we have a big Dario, ambition. why Sorry. are you doing it? Why well, I'm doing it? Because yeah. I bought 16 houses in my life and sold them, and it was always ordeal. I don't want to go through all of it. I don't want people to go through all of it. I think the technology is there. Why not getting it? And also, this enables us to start to sell in cryptocurrency at the moment we're about to launch. We have a good team, blockchain team in crypto. They are doing an amazing job. So I think you want to get to the stage. Wait, so you're going to have a cryptocurrency? No, no, a crypto. We use cryptocurrency to buy and sell property. So some people can put some part or full amount to buy through crypto properties, which is uh, uh, the biggest challenge for blockchain in Italy. And you say, okay, big market, 5% of Italy's GDP. How big is that? I said it's 120 billion for Italy. So we plan to attack our market 1.6 billion of commission right now in the market. And we believe we can do. We start well of a year of hard work, to be honest. Terrific. Thank you so much. Thank you very much Thanks for, so much for being on Meet the Drapers. We'll see what the crystal ball has in store for you. Good. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks a lot, guys. For a way, I feel happy because I felt he was engaged and he, he felt the growth, the acceleration we are doing. On the other side, oh man, there's so much more to do. If we win this with a million, we can do way more. Coming up on Meet the Drapers. It's a, like a gentle loan shark. Welcome back to Meet the Drapers. By the time you're, you're the part. I don't know how much I drink. <laughs> <laughs> that. We'd love to have you be a judge and we'd love the Pope to come bless the finale. Okay, say tomorrow what I'll pursue. That's what it would be like. Yeah, you, okay. oh, I think you will have fun. So, Naveen and Polly, what did you think of Kaja? I, I was actually curious to ask him if there had been time, what were the nightmare scenarios he'd had that inspired him to do this? But I love anything that makes things simpler. To me, it seems like a good idea. Tim, I think it's, you know, real estate, buying and selling is a big market. I don't care what country you look at. The thing that I didn't hear from his is about his team, because to me, it seemed like to me that he is the man, but I didn't hear who else is there that actually helps him execute the business. It is a great use of the blockchain, and I think Kaja also has great potential. I do think whoever gets the network effect of all the properties and all their titles on the blockchain is gonna win a big, huge win. Okay, with that, let's bring on the next entrepreneur. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. Well, I did you think the world needed this company? Well, uh, I... I... <laughs> Yeah, I'm from Russia, not a really a good place to be actually right now, but um, I uh, came uh, when, in Italy when I was three years old uh, with my mother. For the, the first years of our lives, so we didn't have much money. We were always financially struggled a little bit. And uh, I, I thought that uh, looking at some different companies that were uh, happening in the UK and the US, I thought that it was something that uh, in Italy was missing. My background is in uh, pharma biotech and I studied addiction. So I know very well how you know, it's easy to get uh, high on drugs, uh, how it's easy to get on uh, gambling, how it's easy to use alcohol. With my technology and my company, we can actually see how people are using their money and actually help them. We had one of our first users that uh, is uh, our user since the beginning. We had a lot of conversation with her and she told me that the, the, the reality of, uh, of what our service is doing for her is to have the, her mind at ease when she knows that she might struggle that month. She knows she can rely on us and that we are there to help her. What we're trying to build is uh, really helping the people that are at the bottom of this financial pyramid. My stepfather is an entrepreneur, so definitely I always looked at him and sensed that how he creates several businesses. I think that my first business was when I was like I don't know, 13 or 14 years old. I was trying to sell some stuff on eBay. Right now, when I talk to my mother, she told me that she knew that I was 
always become an entrepreneur, or at least in that uh, sphere. I, I don't think that you become an entrepreneur. It's something that uh, it's driving you from inside that you want to actively change the world. Well, our next entrepreneur is Dimitri from Pago Presto. Dimitri, tell us about Pago Presto. Mr. Draper is a legend in Silicon Valley, but also around the globe. So I was very, very curious to see how he will, uh, you know, perceive my company. For me, who I'm just 26 years old, it's also a great achievement. So it, it was cool. Uh, Pago Presto is an on-demand uh, pay solution for blue-collar workers. Basically, uh, in Italy, you get paid once per month. Uh, if during the month you have uh, some problem, for example, you have an expected bill, you go to Pagapresto, you get uh, this 100 euros, uh, 200 euros that you require, and when you receive your salary, we're collecting directly from your bank account the amount of money that you requested, and you don't have to pay any fees or uh, any uh, interest because it's the company that you're, you're working for is going to pay for that. What we do is that we leverage the open banking that allows us to visualize the bank account of the employees to see if they're eligible to our service. We launched the company just three months ago. We are currently raising 1 million euros in order to obtain a license to go to the open market and provide this solution to the B2C. The company My pays for it, so who benefits from the float on the money that sits in their bank account? So basically it's the employee because for example, like for the company, there's no kind of a risk for that. So what's the incentive for a company to do this for their employees? Can you imagine how humiliating should be for an employee to go to the HR manager, to his employer, asking, can you give me 100 euros because I need to arrive at the end of the month because I don't have money to, I don't know, for the food, for the grocery, etc." Dimitri, my question really is that you mentioned that you're going to go B2C. In that case, you won't have a security of employer. Uh, how do you plan to do the B2C? Because that is a you know, big problem. They all become very predatory and I think at the end of the day end up hurting the people they're trying to help. It doesn't make any sense and it's not what we want to do. The idea here is to use that as a hook in order to get a lot of people on a platform and then try to understand how we can help them. With the open banking, we can see up to 90 days behind. We would accept only employees that actually have three months of salary, stable salary that's coming in, and they do not have an ex like very strange expenses. If someone spends 200 euros on a gambling site, we would see that this is a potential user that it's not suitable for a service. But for example, the people that spend, I don't know, 200 euros on groceries, 200 euros for the gas, they have some spending on Amazon, that would be a perfect customer for us because we know how he spends his money. How and do you see all this stuff? I mean, isn't there a privacy issue? I mean, can you see every spend by every individual? I mean, is that just... Yes, sir. I think he should give me 30 minutes of his time in order to understand the real implication of uh, how we're building and what we're building. This is uh, uh, the open banking, the PSD2 is something that exists just in Europe. In the US, there is nothing similar like that because the Senate is afraid that the big tech companies would get a hold of this information and can provide a much specific advertising. In Europe, actually, it's permitted. What we can't do is potentially in the future sell uh, specific information regarding each customer. Terrific. Well, thank you so much, Dimitri, for coming thank you. on Meet the Drapers. I know it sounds stupid to say, but it's not really about money anymore. Cool, if I win, my mother would be definitely very proud. We know that it would be a very, very difficult journey, but you know, even if you improve the quality of life of these people by you know, 1%, 2%, 5%, it's worth it. Coming up on Meet the Drapers. I still don't understand what is it that the company does specifically. Welcome back to Meet the Drapers. Who knows what the Pope's going to tell me, but we got big plans for the party. Necesito practicar mi español. We're now leaving Italy and, and going into Vatican City, which is another country. The bells are announcing our arrival here.
So Naveen, Polly, what did you think? The business of loaning money based on looking at your bank account, and there are two parts. One is essentially working with the employers who provide as a benefit to their employees and really deduct the money at the end of the month. So there is really a 30 day window at the most where a person would be on, uh, could be defaulted or could be laid off. But he mentioned he also wants to go to B2C directly. That means now he has to charge the interest rate to the individual. So I am just not super excited about that business person. It's a, like a gentle loan shark. Is that yeah. the gist of it? Something like Kinder, that. Kinder, gentler loan shark. That's my worry is that it's going to get a lot of people in trouble. So definitely we are not a shark loans, a gentle shark loan. So we're definitely not putting people in a financial crisis. Yeah, I think they'll probably allow their customers to retain their kneecaps. But other <laughs> So, you know what I was concerned about is something a little different. Businesses that are just about making money sometimes just don't make money. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It's pretty easy for somebody to start a business like this. But it's not as easy as uh, Mr. Draper said to set up a business. We're not just, you know, having a book with the name of Mario Rossi that, uh, want, that I gave him 250 euros and need to collect them back. Obviously, there's a lot of technology behind that. Let's move on to the next entrepreneur. Oh, but before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. The last was why. Why? <laughs> yeah. When we sat down two years ago, designing the draft of the software was not just an idea, it was a way to solve their problem, their day-to-day -day problem. As a tech guy, I'm, I'm really liking We designed a product together with the, the market expert. Is there someone in your life that you saw and you were like, I want to be like them. They have integrity. They work hard. I mean, this is an easy question. Even if it's totally different business, it was Kobe Bryant. Mamba mentality was really inspiring to me. It's resilience and consistency makes the difference. I, I also used to play basketball. Not, not in the, the way he did, but uh, being an entrepreneur, you need to be crazy. I feel something inside that's pushing me to go all in on something that was at the time just a passion for me. It's something that I just want to do every day. At the end of the game, a leader is, is alone. No one is coming to, to push you every day, so you need to do it by yourself. At the end, it's just you and what you see in the mirror in the morning. <laughs> Let's bring on our next entrepreneur. This is Lorenzo from Block Invest. Lorenzo, tell us about Block Invest. First of all, we were in the Vatican. And then I saw Tim with a Bitcoin tie. And as a Bitcoin fan, I was uh, like, this, this is my hero. Block Invest, you can see as a bridge between classical financial old world and the blockchain in the context of tokenization of real world assets. When you deal with this kind of investment, investing in real world assets like a piece of real estate in Rome is very difficult, time consuming, the investors are very few, you have a lot of sunk costs and overhead costs. Thanks to our solution, we are helping financial players to tokenize real world assets to a, a management platform, which is actually blocking the solution, that makes the process of investing in this kind of asset more transparent and also liquid. We established ourselves as a first mover in our market, especially picking a very niche but big market, which is the non-performing loan sector. In the last year, we saw that 10% of the global GDP will be on-chain in 2027. We are talking about more than 20 trillion of US dollar. We want to take a slice of this huge amount of money. So let me get this straight. Your customer is the bank. The bank has these non-performing loans. Exactly. You want to tokenize the non-performing loans? And are they going to be institutional investors that buy them or retail investors? At the beginning, just private accredited individual. Thanks to a regulation that is coming for the MECA in Europe, is to include also one day retail investor. Why are you doing this? Every day is an inspiration for me. Help you to wake up 
every morning and says, no one will outwork me. To create something great, you need to work hard and push it. I'm part of a great team, and we have not only tech experts, but we have also people that come from non-performing loan sector, real estate sector. So we have a, a deep knowledge of the underlying asset that, that we treat to better handle a problem that is well recognized. And what's the incentive for the bank to do this? Why, why does a bank want to tokenize all their assets? Uh, They've got a pretty sweet deal right now. Why do they want to cut you in on it? Probably uh, he doesn't understand how the things are working in Europe and it, that is not like US actually, so. For many reasons. First of all, they have to better sell that kind of distressed asset. Because the European Central Bank imposes a threshold. The process is not even digitized. We can create a better flow, more transparent, and they save a lot of money in terms of issuance cost. I still don't understand what, what is it that the company does specifically. Um, probably they don't know the process, how the things are working. They don't know the complexity behind that. Uh, it takes uh, a lot of time to explain it. It took a lot of time to me to, to learn it uh, five years ago. Let me more go straight to the point. We provide a software as a service solution for banks and institutional funds to better tokenize their assets, cutting time and cost proposed to a much larger audience. It's a basically it's a fractional ownership of assets. Exactly. My concern is there are 50 of these people doing real estate. So your real specialty is that non-performing loan. And I don't know if there's enough demand, certainly not at the retail level, even for the sophisticated investor level, I'm not sure there's enough demand for those. It's not a matter just to sell, but it's a matter to put transparency into a definitely non-transparent system. This is what we're trying to, to put on the table, the transparency. The retail demand is more on the real estate side. The great thing of this process is that the non-performing loan ends up with a real estate portfolio in which retail investor can invest because it's more secure, it's more easy to understand. It's a value chain. So you have the private accredited individual and then you involve also the retail in the process. Well, terrific. Well, thank you so much, uh, Lorenzo, for being on Meet the Drapers. It's great to have you, and thanks for educating us on Block Invest. Thank you all. To team and to the judges, to show you what we are really doing, we can invite all of you on the platform to see what actually we are offering, and I bet that you will buy all the tokens that you can buy. Cardinal Turkson, <laughs> so good to see you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining Thanks. us again. Cardinal Turkson took me in an amazing tour around the Vatican today, and I got to see his Arts and Sciences Center and saw the most amazing church I've ever seen in my life. And as we all know, Cardinal Turkson is the Pontifical Academy of Sciences Chancellor, and he ran the Dicastery for Human Development in the Catholic Church. And let's discuss Lorenzo of Block Invest. So Tim, to me, it seemed like to me there was no purpose. I mean, he was purely to make money. There was absolutely no, uh, no fire in him. There was no a purpose that I said, this is why I'm doing it. This is why I think this is a problem that needs to be solved. Secondly, this is like a REIT. You buy a bunch of real estate asset. You can actually invest in the real estate investment trust, which is almost the same except buying the shares, you buy the tokens. To me, there is nothing new here. It did not excite me. Nothing about his company compelled me in any way. I was a little more positive on it because, of course, I've seen many of these entrepreneurs who are taking real estates and tokenizing them and allowing everyone, anyone, to invest in real estate. Are there enough people out there in the world who want to buy a small piece of a non-performing loan so that he gets customer acquisition. I want you to go to meetthedrapers.com and vote and then play the game. It's really fun. 
and I think you'll really have fun with it. We have big prizes. You might end up on set with us. Who knows, you might end up being a judge on the show. So with that, let's bring on the next entrepreneur. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. And, and here, we, we, we do this with our eyebrows. <laughs> what's going on behind the scenes? Very nice. Uh, you guys are from Italy, yes? Yes. What part of Italy? Milan. Yeah. Soccer here in Italy is very, very important. And so we decided to create Hypermesh in order to make them have fun, acknowledge themselves, and have uh, the possibility to take profit from their passion. The award will become more acknowledged thanks to us. The entrepreneur's mentality here in Italy is a bit old, so we had to fight uh, only with our strength. We needed to fight alone, but we create a resilience. We grown up uh, really, really fast in, during these two years of, uh, of business. We were able to collect uh, the money useful to do it uh, by our own. So this is the, the, our successful story. We are very proud of this. We are the first uh, doing something like that here in Italy, alone, by ourselves. So thank you. <laughs> We spend our day uh, on Google Meet, <laughs> more or less, because our job is full remote. So we, we live in front of the, the screen, sometimes even during the night. Buongiorno a tutti, oggi siamo qua, Fabio Antonio di Hypermatch. Sometimes we also train ourselves in gym, okay? This is our uh, free time. We die. <laughs> We are very, very uh, happy to meet Tim because he is an important businessman, an important investor, and uh, we would like to earn everything we can from uh, his knowledge and his uh, experience. Spara qualche frase in italiano su, sullo show, sul fatto di supportarci in maniera presa bene. Uh, ragazzi, seguiteci, uh, è stata un'esperienza davvero bellissima, la rifaremo sicuramente anche l'anno prossimo. Grazie a Mr. Dripper e a tutto il team per questa opportunità. Thank you so much. Coming up on Meet the Drapers. And I'm getting a vibe. And that vibe is... Welcome back to Meet the Drapers. It's one of the most beautiful places in the world, in my opinion. And the Vatican is uh, really beautiful to see every time. In the US, every five, six years, people move house, and in Italy, it's three or four times that. The capital market uh, for, for the startups uh, here in Italy is not as developed as in California or like uh, in the US in general. Everyone would like to have a, a little piece of, of Italy. All right, let's hear from Fabio and Antonio with Hypermatch. There was tension in the air, important room, an important place. Our first English pitch, this would be the most important thing. Hypermatch is an Italian startup that is trying to create an NFT exchange sport for soccer, which is the most important sport in Italy. And what we are creating is a solution in the gaming industry, more precisely in the fantasy sport one in soccer, where football players, soccer players are NFTs. And so our users can exchange them through a marketplace, trying to earn a profit from the trading. And our vision is to create a platform that includes all sports like soccer, baseball, basketball. Our business model is made up by three pillars. The first one is called Initial Item Offering, which is a crypto instrument that we use in order to test a new market when we want to approach it. For example, we use the Initial Item Offering last year in Italy to convalidate our project, creating a community of early adopters of more or less 3,000 users and a revenue of more than 130,000 euros. So we sell NFTs through random packs to our customers so they can play our fantasy football in order to create a team and compete against other players in order to win prizes or other NFT. They can sell through a marketplace trying to take profit from the exchanges and allowing us to earn a success fee from the exchanges. So it's very much like baseball cards where they were 
yes. randomly yes, yes, chosen. Yes, yes, yes. So I, I buy a pack. Exactly. And, and I get a bunch of NFTs. Exactly. And those exactly. NFTs may or may not be what I want. And then I can put them, the ones I don't want, up for sale. Exactly. And I can buy the ones I do want. Exactly. And then I can put together a team, yes. a fantasy team, of great soccer players, and if one it's, of them kicks a goal, yes, yes, my team does well. Earn points, and then I can win uh, and, my and my, my fantasy match. team. Do I, do I only get eleven players, or do I get eleven players and seven uh, for exchanges? Substitutes. Tim Draper was the first billionaire I met in my life, and uh, it was just like uh, normal people uh, when when talking uh, with him. And uh, we are approaching a, a market of uh, 155 million euros, estimated only for Italy. Our purpose is to scale up, uh, first of all, to Europe. And then uh, we want uh, to add US um, championship in order to create uh, something at a worldwide level. Now, we know that there are similar companies creating fantasy yes. for football, for baseball, for basketball for Formula One, yes. many, many are doing it. How do we know that you're gonna be the big winner? I was nervous, but uh, I was also confident because I believe in our project. Every kind of entrepreneur always uh, ask us about our competitors. Because we create a strategy that is based on cost. For example, there is a huge competitor on the market that create NFT for uh, as first players, but uh, its NFT uh, are now very expensive. Our uh, idea is to take a large amount of users that spend a small amount of money in order to create this cost strategy. But you did, you did observe at the beginning that in Italy, you know, technological knowledge is not too far advanced or something. Yes. A, a digital payment system uh, in America is something of uh, 20 years ago. Here in Italy is something of today. <laughs> People talk uh, about faith when they talk about social. So uh, maybe through something they love, they can really strengthen their knowledge. First of all, this whole thing is about betting. And I really think uh, it may not be a great virtue for sitting in front of Cardinal here, because I don't think that, <laughs> that's what he wants to hear. <laughs> I just uh, tried to talk about faith in, uh, in order to allow him to understand the importance of soccer in Italy. Maybe he felt uh, a bit arrogant by myself to talk about faith in a such thing like social. In terms of really looking at any player who has a high price NFT, they can always lower it and get you out of the business. So how would you deal with that if a big player who is a global player, they can always have the users in Italy to be able to go buy them cheaper? Yes, they, they can, but probably they will drastically change their business model. For example, if you sell a Ferrari, you cannot sell a 10,000 euros Ferrari. They are selling NFT Ferraris uh, compared to ours, and they cannot uh, create something too much low in order to preserve their uh, brand identity. We point on uh, uh, the fact that we are the first player on the market. Great, so thank you so thank much you for so much. being a part of Meet the Drapers. I said everything I believe to, to be said. I hope judges understand everything. I think that this particular business is not that easy uh, to be to be spoken only during a pitch. You have to <laughs> pass through all these uh, things. And we do it with a smile uh, in our face. All right, so what did everybody think of Hypermatch? Polly, what did you think of Hypermatch? I love the fact that it's, it's the first one in Italy. I mean, it means that they're going to have a lot of leverage. As a business venture, it's a, it's a way of helping people make money, but I don't see how it transforms the world, people's life, how it contributes anything substantially new to human existence and human development and growth. I respect him, but a cardinal is not an entrepreneur. I cannot solve the world problem just like poverty, but also the church have no solution for that problem. Unless you felt the education piece was worth it for young people. But I don't know, how much of fantasy sports is young people versus guys with beers? <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? 
I agree with Cardinal here that it is not something that's going to move the humanity forward. It does not really fundamentally change the way we live our lives. Having said that, you know, being first in Italy has no meaning because at the end of the day, Italians can buy NFT from anywhere. It's the same website. Right. So it doesn't really matter you are in Italian based or you're German based or you're US based. I liked them. I like their energy. I think they're going to do something with that energy. I don't know where this is going to head, but they would be a good bet. And so why don't we bring on all the entrepreneurs and see what the crystal ball has in store for them. <laughs>So let's see what the crystal ball has to say. We have the power of the cardinal here going <laughs> through the crystal ball. And so a lot of the judgment here will be on how you, you are improving the human condition. I have gotten some feedback from the various judges. Let's start with you, Polly. I think I would go for the kinder, gentler, loan shark people. <laughs> kinder, gentler, loan sharks. Naveen, what did you think? As an investor, if I were to bet on a company that I'm willing to put my money on, I would go with Casa. That market is huge. I think in all fairness, not having really listened to them all in detail, I'll just express my encouragement and prayer for wishes for success and, and then pray for your future. <laughs> so this group will probably outperform <laughs> all our other groups. I'll give you my, my assessment. Hypermatch, I'm concerned that there are many people going after this market. It's a huge market, very exciting. You two look like you've got the energy to take it on. Kaja is a market I think is ripe for the picking, but we're also concerned that the machine has gone so far in this direction that it's hard to sort of turn in a new direction. Paga, presto, it does feel like you are helping people not have to pay a lot for the loan shark work. What we advance at the max is at 250 euros. So definitely we are not a shark loans, a gentle shark loans as Mr. Draper, you know, <laughs> pictured me. I'm not sure there are other real assets to this and I'm not sure that there is a real incentive for the company to jump in and want to be a part of it. Block Invest, I think that getting in there with non-performing loans is a good starting point to get investors there aren't that many investors that really care about non-performing loans, even though they might make a lot of money doing it. So with that, we're gonna go to the crystal ball. Beanie, 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 where are we going with this? Ah, we have the power of the Cardinal, and I'm getting a vibe, and I'm feeling that vibe. And that vibe is Kaja! Kaja, you will move forward to the semifinals. And to the rest of you, you still have a possibility to be in our finale because you, the voters, can all vote. We're gonna take three that we choose and three that you choose, and those will be our finale participants. I'm excited because I think it's that proof that our hard work is paying off more for uh, from a medical reason than monetary reason. We do believe we'll help people to have stress-free transactions and we love that. At the end of the day, you know, it doesn't really matter if I will uh, succeed with Pagaprest or, or not because this new way of assessing the risk, it will come and, uh, you know, and it would be much more fairer to, to people. What I would like to say to the judges is, let's sit down with us and see the level of improvement we are putting on the table. We just need to grow. We want to hire the best people all over the Europe and why not one day also in the US. As a human being, I will do everything possible to make this world better. Help me have the possibility to try. We're funding heroes, heroes, future shakers.